Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Today is the first Tuesday in December, and we've got, what, uh, 27, 28 more days to go for this year to end? So good to be here. Um, well, hello, Brian. It's so good to have you on. Today's topic is going to be just a tad difficult. I was going to talk about emotional eating and standing up for yourself, but in lieu of so many things that has come up, we're going to be talking about something that is very prevalent to the work that I do, especially with uh, women, um, women's wellness and uh, trauma. So, and children, and children, yes. So the topic of today is going to be about what and how trauma affects us in our adult years. And as you know, I'm your clinical hypnotherapist, stress management consultant. I have a healing center in Glendale, California, where we specialize in hypnotherapy, stress management, and action coaching. I'm also a DV consultant, which is a domestic abuse consultant. The gist of the clients that I see, yes, hypnotherapy helps with weight management. It helps with smoking cessation, insomnia, and all kinds of gamuts of anxiety, stress, fears, and phobias. Why? Because we tap into the subconscious mind where I truly believe it's the blueprint. The blueprint of everything. It's like a building when we want to construct a building. Uh, you go into an engineer's office or an architect's office and they create this blueprint and then they take it to the city for approval and everything right so our subconscious mind is the blueprint of everything when there is trauma uh, in the ch in our childhood it affects us not only then but years and years later in our adulthood so what brought all this? Okay, a few things. Let me give you an example. I posted a, a video that was sent to me in order for me to find out what I can do about it and how I can help. And for me to share it, it was about this father that is hitting, spanking, literally abusing his daughter, for the daughter to stand up. Well, it's already gone viral. It is not in the United States. It's uh, in the Arabian country or something because uh, they speak Arabic. A lot of people consider, consider that barbaric, which it is. It is pure abuse and barbaric. But, and that in itself is trauma for a two-year-old child. Now let's talk about trauma in many other ways. I had a client that when she was seven years old, hmm, next door to her, I mean, next in her bedroom, next to her bedroom, her cousin was slip, sleeping and the cousin, uh, something traumatic happened, tragic happened, she fell and there was a lot of, uh, crying and screaming and everything. This child in this room, <coughs> my cousin, was not aware of what was happening, but the sounds and this traumatic experience of her mother coming and screaming and they closed the door on her to protect her not to see. Excuse me. <coughs> it created a sense of helplessness. This helplessness stayed on with her. In the morning, she found out what had occurred, but that traumatic experience at night that she felt alone, that she felt uh, isolated, they closed the door 
to protect her, but she didn't realize what was happening. That entire thing created this sense of, I am helpless, I can't escape. Now, fast forward to coming here for anxiety, anxiety issues, especially when uh, she works in a hospice center and it's people who are in pain and they have to make the pain better and she hears a screaming and she goes into this extreme violent um, reaction. Her own body gets into this anxiety. She feels helpless. She falls. She's almost fainting. And lo and behold, no matter what therapy and everything, they put her on calmer. They put her on all kinds of pills. She sees a therapist. And yet, the effect does not go away. Now, through hypnotherapy, what we did, we unravel. We unravel and peel away layers and layers, going back from one anxiety, going back to another time and a place, going back to another time and a place until she remembers the incident when she was seven years old. By healing, by recognizing what's happening. This is what the work that I do, the 3E method. It's evoking that scene, the scenario, and making sure she understands it's not happening then, but she is safe right now, only recalling what happened. So by evoking that scene, and then going into embracing who she is and the little girl, at that time, safeguarding her and knowing that she was safe. And the parents, what they did with the aunt, they closed the door to safeguard her until she comes to evolve and let go. Now, this beautiful work of hypnosis and hypnotherapy, it's such a natural state of being by closing our eyes and delving as if watching this is your life and becoming a part of it knowing it is not happening now. Let me give you another scenario. Just this month, I have a client who's come here for weight, weight issues, right? And I've talked about her before. Last week, we unraveled something else. And this is the beauty of the work that we do through hypnosis. It's constantly evoking, evoking, evoking so many layers that we are peeling away, right? Just peeling away the layers of the emotional weight, the emotional eating, the emotional connections to her body and why she's holding on to all that weight. Let me give you something. If you recall, we've talked about her, that she had held on to the weight because of the connection to grandma and all, all that. Last week, what she realized was that she was in a way safeguarding herself, right? And this connection to connect and resonate with having grandma's love and everything. Not realizing that as she gained weight, she comes to resent herself. By resenting herself, there is a part of her that punishes herself. Now there is the more dichotomy. Not only she's overweight, and she is doing this because of love and yet self-preservation, self-protection. That self-protection in a way has worn off its, its, um, its use. That's why when I talk about it's not what you eat, but what's eating at you, the work that we do stand up to slim down, 
is literally to help each individual to stand up for themselves, to realize um, the reasons we hold on, our blocks, our walls, our self-preservations and protections, after a while, it becomes it becomes a dichotomy. It works in an opposite way. That this client comes to resent herself, get more angry when she eats, and she gets angry, and then she becomes self-destructive in a different way, hates herself and hates her body. Now negativity is more dense. Weight becomes more heavy. And because of that, <coughs> with anger, resentment, it's dark. So she becomes more depressed. You see the cycle? In a way, when we look at it, I see this part of, how do I say it? It's like this domestic abusive cycle that I love you, I love you, I love you, and then I'm pulling away from you. And then I'm going to hurt you. That self-destructive part comes in. And when we feel the pain, we hate the pain, but we can't get away from the pain because this is the only one we know, we trust, and there is this comfort zone with what we know. By seeing the cycle, and instead of someone else hurting, recognizing her own abusive cycle towards her, towards the little girl, that this entire time she thought she was protecting her, loving her, not realizing she's the first person hurting her, hurting herself. that this child within, because truly that's the work we're doing, not only gets to have a traumatic experience either by the parent or someone else, by peer pressure, by uh, bullying by others, when that's what they learn, they grow and become adults, teens, and because that is not there, and that is what they know, they turn it onto themselves. And they find something that feels good, even though it's going against love. So someone, when I posted that, they messaged me and said, can you do something about this? You're helping motherless children. I do have a nonprofit for motherless children. We work with them after school programs. We do have a behavioral psychologist on board. We do healing and sound therapy, creative writing by expressing and releasing it. So what we are doing in a way is helping children express heal as they are children so they thrive as adults so in that gist they ask me how would you know about trauma well let me say something today i also saw something else that it was just it's snowballing why is this all happening now why did it all come to fruition in the last 24 hours that I come across watching another video from CNN that they did this entire documentary and they're talking about the Vatican and Italy, the, the Catholic Church, the priests in an all-boys school and all the abuse and rape and molestation happening there. Well, let me tell you something. I grew up in an all Catholic school. When I was growing up, my grandmother used to hit me, spank me, beat me, 
and that was called discipline. That does not fly anymore. It doesn't. So if I know anything, I know what hurting a child is. And that little girl learned and wanted to become a police officer to safeguard other children. I wanted to preserve, I wanted to serve, I wanted to protect the ones that hurt others. Now I'm doing it. Now I'm doing it in a different way. I'm helping my clients gently and lovingly peel away to understand, to understand our own behaviors, to understand the self-inflicting harm, to understand where this trauma or lack of confidence to make a decision, having tantrums, some call it ADD or EDD, um, behavioral things. Sometimes it's just reactiveness that the child really does not understand where it's coming from. And all it needs is love. It needs hug. It needs pampering. It needs listening. So now that I have my clients grown and have become adults and are ready to peel away the layers and evoke the past and recognizing that the past no longer has power, control over them today. They do. They matter. You matter. If you have ever experienced anything such as this, either in a more broad and easier way or a more traumatic way, those are the ones that I help. Those are the ones that I truly do the trauma work. Um, yes, it's easy to help someone stop smoking. Those who are doing the hypnosis, yes, doing the affirmations and doing hypnosis, have them sit over there, hypnotize them and do it. But to peel away doing the groundwork from the inside out. And what is it that we say? You want change? Be the change. That's how we heal within. Because no matter what we decorate this incredible face, the hair, the, the body with, nip, and, nip it, tuck it, peel it, we have to heal. We have to come to love who we are. Does that make sense? So I help you. I help my clients do this self-affirmations, self-hypnosis, self-mindfulness to center themselves, no matter where they are, in the good days or in the bad days, the times that they're feeling palpitation and they feel anxious, how to calm themselves down to be in total control, to have a handle, and they put it in here, and they can close this and just literally hold on to it and say, I can handle this. I can handle this. It's in the palm of my hand. And drop it from here, from here, all the way. Just slide it into the hand. You can do this. If you have a pain, if you have anything that anxious, it's happening at this very moment. If you have any palpitation, even if your blood pressure is going up for just a second. Breathe in and exhale. One more time. Nice deep breath. And exhale. 
You know this Tai Chi that they do this? Releasing it. Release. And as we bring from above and to our center, we bring it in and release with your hand like this, as if pushing it forward, releasing it. A part of this entire Tai Chi and everything is energy that comes from above. We bring the light, we bring love, we bring God's light, um, healing, and then we bring it all the way in. And we hold it around our heart, around our chest, bringing it down to our stomach area, which is our core. And as we do this and release it from our core out, and just imagine that entire vortex being released and opened. By doing that a few times, if you do that seven times in the morning, Anytime you feel anxious, you do this. At night before you sleep, you do this. You feel so much grounded and lighter and sleep so much easier. Drifting into that deep sleep. Some of the recordings that I have, and you can always go to my website in the shop and just truly browse my shop. I have audio recordings from weight management, dropping the weight, remember, dropping the weight instead of losing because losing in itself is such a negative and loss and heaviness. We drop it, we let it go, we peel it away. It's your choice. Let it go. Let go. It's evoking what happened in the past is a history. It's reading that history to know where you are. It's like, you know, you do the DNA for your ancestry. People rather do that DNA for their ancestry instead of do, doing the DNA for them to realize, how did I become who I am today? Some call it painful. I call it necessary. It's knowing who you are. That is the most powerful thing that there is. It's called self-respect. Self-respect. So standing up for yourself is, is self-respect. And this client of mine is gaining her own self-respect by choosing not to punish herself anymore. By choosing not to just stuff herself with food, with things that are doughy and gooey and glory and thinking that I am protecting myself and not realizing she's literally hurting the little girl and shoving her down that emotional part of that. Not the little girl, but the emotional aspect. So expressing how she feels, oh, she's already feeling lighter emotionally. She's feeling better and stronger physically. She's peeling away, just peeling away that dead weight. That was just stuck. She's moving with our my exercise CD that it's not necessarily an exercise going into a gym, but by walking, moving, you know, this body movement, enjoying your own body, moving your own body, the way she's walking, coming in here. Oh my God, the heart transformation is amazing. Because that's what transformation is. It doesn't mean that she drops 50 pounds in one month. Transformation is 
peeling away layers by layers and saying, I like me. I like me more. And that is what I want for you. For the ones that you know that may want my help. Not everyone becomes my client. Not everyone, because I have this, I, I want to make sure that you really want to do the work. Because coming in here, it's not saying, okay, I came, now you do the work for me. You can't go to the gym and expect the machine to do the work. You have to do the work. You have to show up. And that's the whole thing. So with that, I want to say thank you for the beautiful messages that I am getting, the emails that I am receiving, and the work that it's happening at our center. Hypnosis is such a magical and a beautiful, beautiful experience. And I would love for you to experience it, even if it is not with me. Uh, in, in one week, you're going to see all kinds of marketing that it's coming. I'm doing this entire thing about dropping weight. It's called Stand Up to Slim Down. It's a whole package. It's a nine-week transformation. And you're going to hear more about it. But today, I want you to know about it and be watchful next week is going to be another incredible session and on january I mean, not january december 17th i have this amazing guest who's going to be here so i'm bringing you more value bringing you more information bringing you people who i'm going to interview that may have something that you are seeking, looking for. Information, education, experience, real talk, inspiring stories. So today I shared about trauma from childhood affecting so many in our adulthood. I shared my own traumatic experiences and there is more, but there's also a lot of good and that affected me into my adulthood that for the longest time i was also dyslexic and stuttered just a tad that i didn't realize so that has healed i stopped smoking i dropped weight i i know how to handle my anxiety when i get anxious or anything when i am upset i now help my clients do the same there is no perfection in life but realizing that it's our imperfections and our experiences with everything that makes us who we are and we can become the best version of what we want so if you are ready to heal within, or if you know of someone who is ready and wants to say yes, by all means, I'm here for you. Thank you. Now, I would like to ask if there is any questions, if there is anything I can help you with, by all means, let's do the comments. Oh, hi, Seda. How are you? Hello, Kelly, Eliza. Uh, hi, Mitra June. How are you? Hello, Harud, Mihev. So good to have you all. Um, any questions? I'm glad it had a good outcome. Yes, thank you, Adrian. Yes, it did have a good outcome. Um, any thoughts, any questions, any comments? Do you hear me? Am I live? <laughs> if, uh, if there is any questions or uh, if I am clear, if you like my background, by all means, send me a yes, send me an emoji. Um, 
if you want more information about my nonprofit, you can go to healwithininternational.org and I will post that website here as well. Uh, we help motherless children. And uh, if there is anything I can do for you uh, or, or any of your loved ones, by all means, let me know. And uh, until next week, I hope today's message was beneficial. And you can always reach me at 818-221-2797. You can text me at all times at area code 818-221-2797. You can always reach me. And until then, by all means, give me a call or share something. I will be more than happy to respond to any of your comments. Until we speak next week, God bless you and may the universal light be with you.